Welcome to an yet another course from Infra Automation on API testing with Risk Sharp and SpecFlow. This is one of the most requested API testing tool for C Sharp from the community, and this course is for you guys right now. Hi guys, my name is Karthik and I am from EasyAutomation.com and welcome to an all new videos on API testing with Restart and SpecFlow. So this is going to be an all new series and this video is going to be an introduction to API testing with Restart using c .net. All right, let's get started. Restart. Restart is an c .net based API testing tool which is very popular among .net community. As you can see, it's downloaded almost 14 million times and it's still counting. That is really, really cool because we have discussed REST Assured in Java and it is kind of very, very popular and we know how the tool was downloaded in the Maven project. And pretty much similarly, there is something called REST Sharp, which is kind of more familiar with the C Sharp community for peoples. And a lot of people are currently using REST Sharp as one of the most important project for their C Sharp based automation testing of API. And this is one of the most requested topic from the community asking me, that they need to learn REST Sharp and these videos are going to be for you guys right now that you can learn REST Sharp most efficiently and more easily in this particular series. REST Sharp versus REST Assured because REST Assured is a series that I'm currently releasing and you might have seen a lot of videos that I have released all these days and it's kind of very hard to differentiate between REST Sharp versus REST Assured because both the tools are great and they are really really better in their own way both are open source both have great community support in their own language perspective and they are very frequently updated so i don't really see any value to differentiate between both of them because both of them are really great in their own ways and the only difference between rest sharp versus rest assured is that rest sharp takes advantage of the c sharp's powerful lambda expressions extension methods dotnet core support which can really, really help to run the same code in any operating system, whereas Rest Assured is Java-based, so you can no doubtably run the same code in Mac, Windows, and Linux operating system, but there is nothing called as extension methods or very hard Lambda expressions available within Java language. So that is the only difference between both of them. Other than that, the tool is really, really great. So what are we going to discuss in this whole course then? So what is going to be the agenda going to look like? Well, the agenda is going to look something like this. As you can see, we're going to start with the introduction and configuration, and then we'll be working with a simple get, post, delete, put, patch operations, and then we'll be working with the custom libraries and deserialization of JSON response, and then we'll be working with parameter types and authentications, and then we'll be fusing the code with SpecFlow because this is going to be because this whole series is going to be more like a BDD based driven approach. So that's why we're going to be using SpecFlow and we're going to be using the power of SpecFlow parallelisms and all those stuff within this particular video series. And then we'll be using the extension methods for extending our own libraries of REST Sharp. And finally, we'll be running the test in parallel to speed up the execution process and we'll be seeing the major advantage of using parallel execution and SpecFlow and NUnit along the line and then we'll be discussing even more topics along the way while we see there are a lot of questions coming from the community so we'll be adding those videos as well so this is going to be the agenda of the whole course and this course is going to be very very exciting guys this is going to be very easy as well so the configuration and installation part is going to be discussed in this video itself so to get started with rest sharp one should need visual studio 2017 community edition or above latest.net framework specflow in unit rest sharp and newtonsoft.json. Well, if you install specflow, this particular reference is going to be installed along with the specflow plugin installation itself. And finally, the end result of this particular whole video series is going to look something like this. We are going to have a base folder, some of the classical folders, feature folders, hooks, models, steps, and utilities and you can see that the models and the steps and features are going to be something ever growing they will be keep on growing based on how you're going to be adding new features and new operations for the execution operation so that's going to be ever increasing but the utilities base classes folders are something that can be restricted or maybe you can still extend that based on how you're going to be expanding the usage of your rest sharp within your project 
So let's quickly see everything in action and understand how things work. So for that, I'm gonna flip to Visual Studio 2017 in my machine. All right, so now I'm in my Visual Studio IDE and you can see that 2019 is gonna be something which is gonna be releasing very soon. So, but as of now, I'm using Visual Studio 2017. Maybe in a few days, I will be using 2019. So you can see that this is the unit test project which I'm gonna be choosing for creation of the REST Sharp test. So let's choose that. So I'm gonna call this as REST Sharp demo and then I'm gonna be hitting just OK leaving the location as this because I'll be cloning this project or maybe checking in all the code within the github once this particular whole project is gonna be ready so you can see that the project is being created so once created we need to add the references within our project right now so the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add a NuGet reference so you can right click the reference and you can go to the manage NuGet reference packages and then you can see there is something called as a browse option here and then you can search for uh, let's say rest sharp there you go and this is gonna bring you this guy and you can see that it has uh, the latest table version of 106.5.4 so I'm gonna be installing that I'm gonna hit OK and once this is done I'm gonna installing the spec flow because spec flow is something that we'll be using along the line within our course so let's install that as well spec flow 2.4 that's the latest version so I'll be installing that and based on the installation reference it also installs the system.value tuples which is fine and you can see that by now we should have the Newton soft.json as well so we don't really have to install that separately and then we also need to install what is called a specflow.assist.dynamics so you'll be understanding why I'm installing this because we'll be using the data table and we'll be using the dynamic way of retrieving the values so please go ahead and install this reference as well so again these things are something that we have already discussed in our PDD with specflow video series in our YouTube as well as in Udemy courses so please go ahead and watch there which has all the information that you're looking for so this is going to be installed as well so once this installation is done then probably we are almost done with all the important references that we require for getting started with the rest sharp and then we can start working with the unit test 1.cs file that we have right here right so that's it guys this is a very very super simple introduction and configuration part for our rest sharp in our next video we'll be discussing about installing the fake JSON server so that we can start using the fake JSON server throughout our course in the REST Sharp. So once again, thank you very much for watching this video and have a great day.